Hello, we are cooking recipes from Dinner Time Live, our Netflix show that you can catch every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Today we're making another recipe from Steak and Sensibility, the episode with a wild theme that started somewhere in like Bridgerton, Jane Austen, English food, and somehow became a loosely inspired by seven courses of beef Vietnamese menu. But this dish was cool. It's a banh mi, the delightful classic Vietnamese sandwich, but reimagined as a tea sandwich version. The tea sandwich version. So the first thing we're gonna do, Andrew's gonna make some pickled vegetables. So it's it's pretty straight, classic banh mi fillings. So pickled carrot, pickled daikon. We have cucumbers. Sometimes it's pickled, sometimes it's not. We decided to not pickle it all right. and leave it nice and fresh. You're gonna deal with the carrots and the terrifying mandolin, which scares me all the time. Are you scared of the mandolin? I am intimidated by it. I wouldn't know if I'm scared. But <laughs> useful for this thing, which is slicing Very veg. thin slices yeah. of vegetables. So we cut them about, what is that, two inches? Yeah. They're already peeled. We're gonna cut little two inch uh, logs. And the idea here is like, usually the pickled veg are like julienne and you get like a big stack in there and it just gets stuffed into a baguette. Yeah. So, so, so delicious. We were trying to have this like super clean, neat cut. So it's hence all, like it's the- all shingled in there. Again, this guy is dangerous. So I always make sure my hands are flat when I'm holding down on that thing. And you don't wanna press too hard. Just let the, oops, see that can happen. Use the guard if it comes with it. <laughs> Feel free to use the guard. Because honestly, if you slice your hand open, I'm not even gonna look over there. I'm not looking at you if that happens. <laughs> this is leftover from the show. This is pickled daikon. And basically they all just get the same marinade, which yes. is rice wine vinegar and salt. Because while vinegar is acidic, it's not salty. Like, you know what I mean though? It's like you, you taste something salt. and you're like, oh, that's sour. And you're right. like, oh, that must be seasoned, but it's not seasoned. MSG. It's also an additional preservative on top of the, yeah, the vinegar and the yeah. sugar. So help your pickles last longer. Sugar. And then I'm gonna add a little hot water just to get this all dissolved. I love by me. I don't want anybody to think this is like we're trying to improve on the thing. No, but it was not at all. cool to get the same flavor in like a different little package. It was as mm -hmm. though you had like scraped off the crusty part of a baguette and just had like the squishy center part of it. So I'm just gonna pour this over the top. And we're not heating this up or anything as far as the pickling liquid goes. We're just gonna let it marinate basically. Oh. Uh, I would say at least a couple hours. You'll, you'll be able to tell like the crispiness of the carrot will start to disappear and it'll be a little more soft and pliable. By that time, it should have all the flavor absorbed. And this is the same exact marinade, right? Just like? Yep, same stuff. Just this one's been kicking around for a bit longer. That's so good. And you can see it's like, it's very soft and, and pliable. Yeah, daikon, like a little bit mellowed from like the radish flavor, but like it's become so savory, mm -hmm. it's outrageous. All right, so while that is marinating, we can get the rest ready, which is thin shaved cucumbers. Did yeah. you do these on the mandolin or do you use it by hand? Yeah, on the mandolin, same thing. This of course is all your orange blood all over the mandolin. Yeah, maybe we could give that a little wipe, a little rinse. And also like in regards to the mandolin, you'll see like, I'm not gonna rest my little digits. I'm just gonna hold on to that. We're not gonna throw it away though. We're gonna use it uh, in our stew later on. Right, Chris? You say so, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna seed these because we can deal with it. We can deal with the spice. Yeah. So this was just super thin rounds, right? Yep. So you can get them thin enough on that knife of yours. <laughs> on my Fisher Price, my first knife over here. <laughs> Looks like you got it. Well, now they're getting worse since you said something. A little thin slice of jalapeno, thin slice cucumber. We've got our two pickles. And then do you want to mix our mayo? Yes, sir. For the show, I think Dave cooked off some chicken livers because- Which is the traditional bami. It turned our dainty little tea sandwich into like a very aggressive gray Right. Thing. We're trying to make those delicate little tea sandwiches and the chicken liver just kind of- <laughs> stepped all over everything. <laughs> For this, we're gonna go back to our original thing we tried, and that is a mixture of mayonnaise and Maggie seasoning. And to me, the taste of it is right in the middle of like soy sauce and Worcestershire. That's exactly right, like dead center soy sauce. Yeah, it doesn't sauce. have all the aromatics and spices of Worcestershire, but, and it's not quite as just salty as soy sauce. Yeah, a couple, like a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half or two of the Maggie. So QP already is super umami from MSG. Mm -hmm. This is now just quadrupling down on it with the Maggie. But okay, Maggie mayo, pickled daikon, these carrots that are pickling, thin sliced jalapeno, we'll pull off some cilantro stems, thin sliced cucumber. Leaves of cilantro, right? Leaves yes. of cilantro, yeah. It's gonna be a cute yeah. little leaves of cilantro. And then this, this was the other main thing is chocopan, milk bread. Soft and fluffy, great for tea sandwiches. We forgot one thing. We forgot the meat, we forgot the meat the cold cut, baby. So for the show, it was all based around the Vietnamese seven courses of beef. And so Dave elected to use pastrami, but 
as we were tasting this over and over again, it kept on being like, man, with like a mortadella, these sandwiches would be awesome too. So we brought both today so we can do two varieties. Should we do them together? You mean like a combo? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Are you crazy, If bro? you wanted to, could Are you, you crazy? Could, could you use turkey cold cuts on this? No, I don't think you could. No. no. <laughs> I don't think you could. What do you think for order here? What do we think for order? Mayonnaise, meat, and then Mayonnaise, veg. veg. All right, so we're gonna start with our Maggie mayonnaise here. Spread some of that on each one. Spread to the edge. It's all the delightful. Way. Great call. Let's our, let our meats meet in the middle. I'll do two and you do two. You and I tend to put a lot of thought into uh, shingling our cold cuts. First, I think we kind of want to um, pull some of these out of the liquid. And dry them off a little bit. Yeah, otherwise we're going to end up with a soggy sandwich that just tastes like pickling liquid. So you can do this either on a plate or a paper towel or just kind of on the side of a bowl and let it drain like that. All right, build. How do you think? We'll start with this dike, huh? Because we want to also consider the visuals on this one, the end result, how it's gonna look inside, right? But full coverage is important, I think. Full coverage is even more important than that. Like there's no crop tops, no spaghetti straps. Everything's gotta be very full coverage here. We're using what, like six to eight slices on each of each? Yeah. If any banh mi shop in America took this long to assemble a sandwich, it would instantly go out of business. The slowest banh mi makers in the world. In the, uh, <laughs> That's so slow. This side of the Mississippi. I'm gonna do leaves of cilantro and slices of jalapeno on each of these two. I'm so tempted just to pile this up. But like, if you don't do it in a flat, even layer. You're gonna lose that whole tea sandwich look, right? Yeah. You're doing really nice work with the right. jalapenos. Follow me with jalapenos, though. That one's gonna be spicy first. <laughs> oh God, turn the stove on. I would burn my face off. <laughs> Not many people get burned making bunny <laughs> making tea sandwiches. Close it up and you slice the first one while I finish oh boy. jalapenoing. Look how nervous we are to slice this thing. I know, because we saw. We saw what happens. You saw how not to slice it. All right, sir. All right, so I got a little bowl here. You know what's gonna go in there? My snacks. It's Chris's snacks, that's right. Bon me crusts. So I think with the when you're cutting tea sandwiches, a lot of people just wanna like chop straight down on it. What happens then is you're gonna end up with squished edges and squished bread, and uh, that's not so nice looking. You wanna kinda do a nice little gentle slicing motion. And this is the snack right here. Yeah. That goes in there, not like, in there. I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. The other thing is you wanna wipe your knife every single time you make a cut on it. Otherwise, you're gonna be left with residue and, and not so beautiful things on Where the outside. Where do you train for this? Do you train the clergist for this? Um, I started at a Russian tea. <laughs> no, <laughs> just. Dude, those are some clean cuts though. Yeah. First, you're gonna to wanna to go around, remove the, the crust, because God forbid it, someone has to eat crust. And we're gonna get our nice little clean edges. And then from here, what we could go that way, get triangles. We could do diamonds. We could do square. <laughs> we could do little squares. What do you want to do? You want to just... We're just going to go triangles. We're going to make more of a substantial tea sandwich. Full size triangle or are we going to do baby triangles? What do you want? Would you rather eat this or do you want a little more? I think you got to go baby triangle. A more traditional dainty. Let's go traditional dainty. All right. Because God forbid we do not. Oof. Oh God. Triangles are a mistake. It's okay. It's going to be all right. See? Look at that. Pretty cute. Oh, they stand up too, that's cute. Look at this. Is that way? Oh. Come on, let's stack yours up. Yours you know what else you could do is those cute little frilly toothpicks if you want. Mm -hmm. That's another option. All right, I'm gonna go rectangles. You didn't do any, take any of my advice. You didn't I, didn't do, I didn't do any of the things you said. I pushed on this one. That's a disaster. Okay. I'm been disqualified. How do we want to cut this one? Make clean squares for this one. My squares suck. What's interesting about tea sandwiches too, if you look in our, uh, crust bin over here. I think you get more of that than you do actual sandwich. Yeah, the yield is 50% <laughs> on these sandwiches once you trim them. Yo! That. That's the combo one too. Yeah. Nice presentation. <laughs> Andrew made this one. <laughs> Let me give you a solid A on this slicing job. C plus on this one. A plus plus on these two. Uh, 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 uh. You're gonna have to take summer school for this one, buddy. Bon me tea sandwiches. How did we do? They're so good. Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous, man. I hate how good this is. I wish I had some tea, though. This is Low Tea Kitchen <laughs> with Andrew and Chris. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to y'all soon.